Hey, good morning, Internet. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So I've been staying in the little Connex, and uh, but it's only the one third done. But I want to pick up this one point that's concerning because this is the first night that uh, we found container rain in the unfinished part of the container. Let me rotate. So what I did is I ended up taking and uh, cutting a little slit in the insulation and checking this. And it's, it's dry, bone dry. I'll take that off. So this does work uh, in here. So no container rain in here. But uh, it was container raining there where the insulation's loose and unfinished. And uh, so you can see drips on the floor. All right. And then, uh, you know, here's the biggest right there. That's the leftover. Now, the sun's already out. It's already driving the, the condensation out. But if you zoom and you look at the ceiling, there you go. Now, this is a big problem, and this is what I've always debated. Will my method keep away the rain? So, uh, obviously, since I've moved in. Now, this is uh, when I first got these, uh, they container rained once. And this is the second time I've seen container rain in this thing. But I can't build a house this way if it's going to uh, container rain inside, right? But it is dry where my idea is. So I'm going to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to put uh, inspection ports above the, um, wherever I put in a light, I'll have a plug of insulation and I'll, I'll, you know, tape it and whatnot so I can just push it up. Inspection port where I can inspect the top uh, for mold because I don't want moisture, right, in there. So I have inspection ports throughout this thing. I'm still going to go with my design, uh, but those of you that are spray foaming, you won't have this problem because the... Uh, insulation and this and the metal will be laminate it'll be one so I, I don't know my idea may not be the answer uh secondly uh i'm going to have an evaporative condenser inside the house that's making water and that'll be pulling moisture out of the uh, environment right now this is unfinished uh, but i did want to flag it right away because this is a very important component of building a house and I don't want to pretend uh, for those of you who are watching my channel that oh he knows exactly what he's doing I don't I've built exactly one of these and I'm in the middle of it so uh, but inspection port so I can inspect the metal above each light that's super smart in my opinion and that way I can even get an otoscope uh, the other thing I can do is get a um, hygrometer a moisture sensor and get in there and Check, check around in there. They make them where they're super long so I could get in there. Uh, I don't think I'll have a moisture problem based on the other side. But um, my bathroom's functional. Let me rotate. So what's in here right now? So what's in here right now is my sink where we brush our teeth and whatnot. A shower where I shower. Um, a little field potty, sea toilet kind of a thing. Uh, full up living condition. And then the heater system I have is propane. Now, propane is a moisture creating heat system. Uh, and you really have to be careful with them. I, I only turn it on twice in the night and chew away. It's pretty warm in here. Uh, between 50, uh, when it's 30 outside, it's between 50 and 63 inside. But the uh, propane generates heat. And then I cook, I do coffee and I'm cooking dinners here. So this is, uh, if you built a 140 foot container as a home, your your moisture load would be the same way. But ultimately, I'm going to have electric heat on the wall, which is a non moisture creating uh, heat, and uh, that's going right there. So it'll be a mini split, so non moisture. I'll have an evaporative condenser in here, and then I'll have the insulation. And at that point, I can monitor the moisture levels. And just make sure the moisture level, I think if they're below 50% here in Texas, that I won't ever have a condensation problem. But, uh, you know, if uh, you could check what the dew point is outside, and if the dew point is 3% humidity and your conics is 40, your walls are going to sweat, right? If, once, if it hits that dew point uh, temperature, it'll sweat. And that's what happened to me last night. First time ever uh, since I originally had them delivered. So I've been here two years, but obviously to have a house that doesn't have a mold problem, you can't have this. And this is the one big drawback that I think is a, a real deal uh, on container homes. 
and uh, I'm pre-living in it. You can see it's not finished. Uh, I'm super confident still on my plan, but the inspection ports and the hygrometer, great idea. And I think anybody who's doing something experimental with a, uh, a shipping container home should put in access ports like I am and do a little bit of inspection every now and then. All right, so uh, container rain. We're still talking about condensation inside your uh, container. So yesterday I took the time to look up uh, how much water is generated from propane. And there's uh, 1.6 gallons of water per pound of propane uh, created. So, you know, you burn a couple of four, three gallons of uh, propane, you've got a gallon of water that's going to condense in your in your container so there's two kinds of heat right there's dry heat like a wood stove uh well as long as the wood's not wet but you know dried wood in a wood stove would be dry heat and then there's uh wet heat like propane uh human breathing uh you know six guys staying the night in a shipping container i bet you you would end up with a container moisture if it wasn't insulated now a lot of people used uh spray foam to put that barrier between the metal so that it just simply can't condense I didn't for two reasons. Um, one, I'm trying to build a thousand year home and my experience with spray foam is even the closed cell stuff. If it gets wet, it wicks the moisture into it and you get a mold problem. I use mineral wool instead and three quarter inch drywall and then of course the foil behind me. And it wasn't enough that without this pressed against the wall, it still allowed moisture to so air to circulate. So the drywall and the flooring to seal it is obviously super necessary, but let me rotate. So last night I used an electric heater in here and I'm telling you that this is dry, dry, like same conditions. The only difference is I didn't use a, uh, uh, you know, a blue flame propane heater. There's propane heaters that are safe for interior use. So, but uh, that is the only difference and that was enough to make it drip. And if you remember yesterday, there was drips on the floor, drips on the floor. So my second uh, advice, uh, besides, you know, seal, sealing the uh, metal, you got to you got to put a barrier between it. But my second thing of advice is use a dry heat method, which for most people would either be a camp stove uh, with good wood or in my case, I use an electric heater. Uh, ultimately, because um, hot water tanks are a uh, passive storage energy system for solar, um, I might uh, put a water heater underneath the house for uh, underfloor heating. And then uh, that's what, how I would heat it. I just need to do some math and figure out if one water heater would heat this all night long, yada, yada, yada. Um, I always stay inside here a few degrees warmer than the outside, uh, even when the power's off. And uh, so 65 is comfortable to me, uh, but I stay anywhere between 42 and 65, depending on outdoor temperature, wind. Um, but anyway, I, I defeated, in one day, I defeated the uh, the uh, container problem simply by not feeding into the moisture chain and using dry heat. And uh, that's my recommendation. Electric or wood stove, uh, if you're in a wet environment, will go a long way towards avoiding container rain. All right. Thanks. This is Steve with Thousand Year Home. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.